Hey everyone, I thought it would be fun to create a time clock application. So we're going to be using some HTML, CSS, some JavaScript, and um, we're going to be using a database and we're going to use Firebase in this uh, tutorial. So let's get started. Let's go ahead and open up the terminal or you can open up the command prompt if you're on a Windows system. And then we'll navigate to the desktop or whatever directory you want to work in. So I'll cd to the desktop and then I'll run multiple commands at once so then we're gonna uh, make a directory and we're gonna call it time clock and then we're gonna navigate inside that directory and we're gonna create a file and we'll call it uh, index.html for now and if you go inside this directory you can see that all those commands will run at once and we have our new file here and I'm gonna open it up with Sublime you can use whatever text editor you want and I'll just type in H and tab to autocomplete and I'll call this application time clock and just to see something on the page I'll give it a heading oops let that autocomplete and I'll call it time clock save it and then we'll open this up in Chrome real quick. And we can see that we're starting to have a web application over here. Now let's start including some of the libraries. But first, let's go to Firebase, which is the database that we'll implement. And I find that it is really um, easy to use. Uh, it has a lot of nice features. It's pretty looking, right? It's pretty quick as well. I haven't scaled it very high, I will admit. But I have used it in production for a couple of applications. So you'll create an account, it's pretty straightforward. Once it's created or you've logged in, you'll go to the console. And then we'll create a project. And we'll call it time clock. And it's going to give it a unique ID down there. So I'm just going to call it time clock. And uh, you can type uh, whichever convention you use, but I like camel case. So time clock, it's going to give it an ID, but you could change it if you wanted to. So I'll create the project. And while that's happening, we'll get our other dependencies like Bootstrap, and I'll type in the CDN actually. So a CDN is a content delivery network. Um, instead of explaining that, I'll explain what Bootstrap is. It's kind of like a, uh, it's like a, these libraries to create some really nice looking UIs. Um, it kind of follows like what Twitter uses. So uh, I'll just use 3.3.7 for now. There's a beta version, but whatever. We won't use that at the moment. So here I'll type in. Um, so there's two, um, there's CSS here and there's JavaScript. So to use the CSS, we'll have to grab a link, push tab to autocomplete. Now we'll let that just fill in there. And then we'll include the script here, tab to autocomplete, source is there, bam. And we'll save that. And then we'll also include jQuery, which is needed. So um, it's not only needed, but it's going to make our life easier as well. So we'll get the CDN for that. And we'll get the uncompressed version here. And this is another library as well that just makes life easier. when using. Um, instead of having to type out all the JavaScript, you can use some like quick little tools to grab uh, like DOM elements. Uh, then the Firebase app is created over here. And... If you go over right here where it says to add Firebase to your web app, it's going to give you a snippet of code that you're just going to copy and paste right here at the bottom of your page before all other scripts. And we'll tab it out to make it look nice. And um, so, sorry, we'll save that. We'll refresh the page. But before we do that, we'll open up the inspector thing right here and we'll go to the console. And we'll refresh. You can see that the text immediately changed because now we're using Bootstrap. Um, so now that we're fine there, what I'm going to do is start using some Bootstrap classes. So I'll create a div, and the class will be a container, which will actually hold everything in here, everything in the HTML part of the page. We'll close that right there, and I'll preemptively give a comment and say this is the end of uh, end of container. If I could spell, close that, tab that out, create another class, uh, another div with a class of row, and we'll call this. In a sec, we'll give it a name, 
and we'll call the ID um, <laughs> index header. Sorry, I'm trying to think. Uh, heading. Heading header doesn't really matter. And then here, also preemptively comment out. End of div. And I know I messed up there. Save that. Bam. Um, end of row. So you have a container. You have your row, and then inside that row, you're gonna have a div class is equal to a call mid twelve. So when you're using, yep, I'm a dick. So when you're using Bootstrap, it follows a grid system in a horizontal pattern. So uh, horizontally, you'll have twelve. It's a grid of twelve that you follow. So right here, I'm just saying to take up the whole uh, twelve grids there and uh, end it there. Then we'll do end of um, end of call there. End of call. Tab that out. Save it. Cut that sucker there. And before I start typing in more HTML, I know that's pretty confusing, but it's going to help us get more organized later. I'll refresh it, and you'll see that this is going to get formatted a little bit differently. It's like kind of in a container, quote unquote. So then now I'll just copy this part. Uh, all of this. I'm going to copy all of this, then paste it, save it, and then instead the ID is going to be, um, this is going to be the, really should be the body container, but instead of the index heading, I'll say uh, timestamp div. Fuck it. Um, and then I'll give it a button. So get rid of the heading there and inside that part we'll just put in a button and we'll close the button and we'll give it a class a bootstrap class and we'll call it a button and button type primary save it and then we'll click this as login and we'll save it refresh the page and you see we have a little button there and inside this we'll create some new scripts in here and use a little bit of Drake excuse me jQuery to um, get this get whatever action happens there so I'm gonna grab that button give it a ID real quick we'll call it login button save it and we're gonna use some jQuery so dollar sign money money um, some quotation marks then use the selector in this case it's an ID so we'll use a hash and then type in the button name so login button um, and then we'll do a uh, whenever it gets clicked we'll do the following function fire this baby off and we could just say hey uh, console.log we got clicked so why does we might as well do that so we'll just type in click refresh it and I know this is gonna bug some people so I'll just put a semicolon there so refresh it and when you click that button it's gonna say logged in well that's all nice but let's start connecting our database to the application so we'll go to database and right now I don't want to authenticate anybody but there are some rules in our database stating that you can only read and write to the database if you're authenticated but since I just really want to show you guys how to do this I'm gonna go ahead and say that anybody can read and write to our database and it's gonna give us a warning that says our security rules are not very good and I'm saying yeah well eh. Doug Life. So then I'll go into the documentation for Firebase Write Data. I just do Google searches, guys. That's all I am is a Googler. So it says to write data, you're going to use these basic functions. But before I, I need to get a reference to the data uh, to the table that we're going to be reading and writing to. In the in this case, I don't have any tables in my application. So we're going to whenever we write to some table that isn't uh, in the database yet you're gonna create a new um, a new reference to something so like you'll either create a new table or a new child on the table so I'm gonna look for a ref is equal to and then I'll just copy this little example here and I'm really not gonna use like any of this I'm gonna like delete most of it so uh, here so when you click the button instead of logging something I'm gonna go ahead and 
create a reference real quick to our database and it's going to be to a table that we'll want to eventually call um, timestamp and so then we're also going to say um, not only do we have a reference to the timestamp but we're going to write some data to it so not set because set would um, kind of delete all the values every time and what I mean to say it's gonna write over values every time that you click the button what we want to do is we want to keep you know appending values to the database so we're gonna append and then uh, we're gonna create a variable first called um, current time and it's gonna be equal to a date dot now which is just a JavaScript um, you know like a little it's a timestamp it's just gonna give us a timestamp it's not really a good reference, like a good timestamp reference, but we can convert it later. It's just something that we can understand better. But for now, we'll do date dot now, current time, and then in these brackets, we'll have the current time be the um, the UID, the unique ID, and then we'll have the value be true. And you can see that if everything is going well, when I refresh the page and I click this button so let's open up the application and then our database side by side uh, when I click that button I should be writing to this database and there you see that I did write to the database and since at the time there was no timestamp table um, it created one for me and we can kinda just see that again if I go ahead and delete this real quick so I'll delete that table and then I'll log in and then I'll write to it and if you see you keep logging in you're gonna create um, some new values in there and you're gonna append to the table but if you instead had put set right here instead of update you're gonna start writing over those values we'll refresh the application real quick and you can see every time that you push that button it's actually gonna just write over every single reference in that database uh, stay tuned. We'll keep on iterating on this um, this application. Maybe we'll make it a little bit snazzier, or maybe you know I'll do what I do and just fall off the planet for a few months and just do something totally new. All right, guys, have fun.